Let's edit a wildlife photo together. We're going from this to this using only one software and using a very easy workflow. The overall duration is literally less than five minutes. Of course, in this tutorial, I'm going to guide you through every step. So the video will be longer, but I promise that the process is very easy. In case you don't know me, my name is Chiara and I'm a wildlife photographer specializing in birds. So let's get started. First of all, some general thoughts on editing. Editing is a very personal choice and I'm not saying that this is the best workflow, it's just what works for me. Personally, my editing style is pretty natural. This means that I don't do really advanced editing and this is why I can use only one software. To me, the important is to be able to complete my editing in the fastest way as possible because I would rather be outside with wildlife and birds rather than sitting at my laptop. So this is why I only use Lightroom. I'm not saying that doing more advanced editing is wrong, it just comes to personal preference and to what you want to achieve with your editing. To me, editing is more about bringing back to the photo what I originally saw with my eyes, knowing that my camera has some limitations and also anyway knowing that photography is an artistic form. But before actually rushing into the editing, I want you to take a moment for the first step which is only analyzing your photo. But now let's have a look at the file. So this is our starting photo of a great cormorant. We will just very quickly look at the photo, try to understand whether there are some particular areas for attention. And it's also very important in this stage to already start thinking about how do you see your photo after it's post-processed. This is very important to kind of give you a direction in your editing. This is a pretty good starting photo to start with. We have our subject, which was quite close. So we have good details. And and at this point is also very important to zoom in to try to understand what's the level of noise we will have to deal with in this case there's some noise but nothing crazy and at the same time i see quite good details on our subject. If we go back to look at the photo in the, its totality, what immediately takes my attention is this very bright area here. This is really wide. We can clearly see it just pressing the J. This will just make pop up the areas which are burnt highlights or also pure blacks. In this case, I don't have any black. You can see that here in the bird, there's actually nothing. It's not very dark, this photo. But here you can see that this part means that here we don't have any details. So I know already that this is a part of the photo that I will have to keep an eye on it and I will have to put some work to try to recover some of those details as well as try to not make the viewer have his attention immediately dragged towards that point, but rather on our subject. So this is what we will be doing and now we can officially start. So what I would do to start with for every photo is actually the cropping. Cropping is very important because it's the perfect way to help you achieve the composition you want. Of course, ideally, you think about the composition where you're out in the field. However, we know that with wildlife, that's not always possible. So luckily, we can then sit back at our laptop and decide how to change the composition. The second reason why cropping is very important is that also, depending on the destination of our photo, the cropping can be different. If I want to use a photo for social media, I would do a different cropping versus, for example, preparing a photo for printing. To start with, I'm going to select the crop tool. Let's say that I want to post this photo on Instagram, so I'm going to choose an aspect of 4 by 5 ratio. So this is what we have. At this point, when it comes to cropping, we keep an eye on the composition, of course. So you see already that automatically I have these grids. This is very helpful because it just helps you following in this case what's the rule of thirds the rule of thirds is a very common composition rule applicable also to wildlife photography where basically we will divide our photo in nine squares identified by these two vertical lines and the two horizontal lines what's very important is that we want the most important elements of our photo of our subject to fall at the intersection of these lines so in this case for example i would position it in this way because i will have the eye falling at this intersection and I have the limit of the bill uh, coming at this intersection. So I'm quite happy with this crop. What's also really important in this case is also to consider the use of negative space. So leaving enough empty space, especially in front of the bird. We have to understand here that the bird is looking towards this direction. So we want more free space in this side. 
So this is my crop and I'm happy with it. Another thing worth immediately checking is at the lens correction tab if we have this ticked, so the remove chromatic aberration and the enabling of the profile corrections. I have these automatic whenever I import photos on Lightroom, but in case you don't, please make sure that these are ticked. So after cropping, I'm going to take care of the noise of this photo. We saw it already that actually in this photo there's not that much noise and I'm just going to use the denoise tool from Lightroom. Lightroom only recently launched a new denoise reduction tool based on AI which works really great. Before that I was also using third-party softwares or Topaz denoise but since this edition I just prefer to stick to Lightroom because it just makes the workflow much shorter. We are here in the detail tab. We scroll to the, the noise reduction and we're going to hit denoise. Here you will be able to see the details of the bird and you will see how the denoise will affect your photo. So normally I would keep this on an average value. This is because if you have too much denoise, of course the background will look great, but at the same time you're going to lose some details in the bird, which is not ideal. So normally something in the middle way uh, works fine. On the other hand, you see here you have some what more detail, but the denoise is not great. So again, I'm going to go for or about 45 for this photo. So I'm going to enhance. So now that we have our denoise version of the photo, uh, we can move to the next step, which is the general adjustments. General adjustments will be applied to the whole photo. On this side, this is cool because it means that we will be able to quickly change our photo. On the other hand, sometimes this is a bit limiting because we might not want to apply the same changes to the whole photo. So when we move to the general tab here, I'm going to to make very subtle changes. So here I'm going just a bit to increase the exposure. I think that this photo was pretty well exposed. There was plenty of light. However, what's very important here, as we mentioned when we analyzed the photo, is that we have to take care of this very white part. So as you remembered here, we have this clipped highlight area. So what we will do will is actually bringing down the highlights, which already make that much better. We can even try to recover a bit of detail, also bringing down the whites. And this already helped quite a bit. So if we go to the before and the after, we see that we don't have that white anymore. What I'm also going to do here is also lowering a bit the contrast. I know that in this case, the image will look pretty dull, but normally I work with the colors at the later stage of my editing workflow. In terms of the shadows and the blacks, I'm actually leaving them as they are right now. We don't have true blacks in this photo. We can quickly check here. You see, if I wanted really black, I will have to drag quite a bit to make them appear, which is definitely something that I don't want to. I'm going to bring this as it was at zero. Perhaps I'm going just to, to bring them a bit down the shadow. Um, at this point, I'm not touching anything in the presence. I'll also do this more at, at the next stage of editing. And in terms of vibrant saturation here, I'm also very careful because it's very easy to overdo things here, especially with the saturation slider. If we increase the saturation, you see we are acting on the intensity of all the colors and this very easily become really unrealistic. So normally I don't touch the saturation slider that much. I normally use more the vibrance. Also with this vibrance we are changing the intensity of the colors but the vibrance works more on the more muted colors. So for example in this case if I'm increasing the vibrance I see the effects on the greens of the background. I see the effects here on the carmine which is not necessarily a good thing because there there's this blue purple coming through, but the yellow, for example, stays the same. Whereas if I increase the saturation, you see that the effects are much more severe, I would say. So let's tone down definitely the saturation only, like, uh, only really a bit. And let's use a bit more maybe just of the vibrance. But again, we will work at the colors later on. These were our basic adjustments, but now we move to what I consider the most important part of processing a wildlife photo, which is the selective adjustment. With these adjustments, we are going to act only on selected parts of the photo. And Lightroom, thankfully, made things much easier recently thanks to really great masking tools. 
What I'm going to do here is click on the masking tools and I will add a new mask for the subject. So basically Lightroom will be able to identify what the subject, in this case it basically recognized it perfectly. This will not be the case for the whole photos that you're going to process, it really depends especially on how much cluttered is the background as well as if there are other elements in front of your subject. Then what I'm going to do immediately in this case is to actually duplicate and invert a mask. Basically what these do is create a second mask which has everything but the subject. You could have also created this just going by create new mask and select background for example, it would have done the same. That's just what I do, I find it that it's just easier because when I have the mask then I just go to duplicate and invert. So at this point we have a mask where we only have the subject and we have the mask that only has the background. So when it comes to the subject now we can make more changes that will be applied only to the bird and now our intention is to make the bird pop even more. So what we're going to do, I'm going to add a bit of contrast because we removed it back then and at this point I'm also wanting to do some color adjustments only at the bird. To do this I'm going to use a new amazing function of Lightroom which is the point color. So I, for example the first thing I'm going to select this yellow from this area and what I want to do is to make this more evident so I'm actually going to increase the saturation just just a bit not that much again it's very easily to overdo it so just just a bit to make it pop more on the other hand I'm also doing something else because I think that this the plumage of the cormorant is going towards a weird blue purple if that makes sense so I'm going to select this and I'm going the, the opposite here so I actually decreasing the saturation here so you can see the difference you we are bringing away that blue there what's happening also though is that we're also losing the saturation in the eye I will work at the eye later on so I, I don't care that much at this stage so but this is already looks better so you can see so again what I'm doing also here now that I have only the cormorant selected I'm going to bring a bit of texture clarity not that much and I'm also adding some extra sharpening only at the cormorant at this stage now it's time to work at the background so you have to understand that the background is almost as important as your subject. The background can really make a difference between an average photo and a super photo. So when it comes to the background, again, what I'm doing is actually add a bit of contrast because I think that it was too plain and I kind of like there is these different colors here, especially on the top. Um, but this is also the moment where we act, especially on the color of the background. We can play with the temperature. So I actually going to move this a bit on the colder side and I also going to change slightly the tint towards more this green. Again, I don't want to overdo it because I want it to keep quite natural. So this was at the original one, so it was a green because there, there were some trees very far away. This is why it's so blurred anyway. But this is also why it's so easy to change the color of the background. And it is also very important for everyone to realize when you look at photos. I want to show you this especially because if you look at photos online, I feel that sometimes, especially beginners, approach wildlife photography with wrong expectations just because of what they see online. But now, as you saw, changing colors is so easy and very easily you will also find photos with very unnatural colors. And the easy answer is that for how hard you try, you will not be able to find that color in nature because it's just something that is done in post-production. Again, it's up to you how much you want to change the colors. I know that many people like this color grading idea, so it's really an overall change of the colors and it's more about the mood of the photo. It's up to you, but I just want to share how easy it is to do so. But again, I don't want to overdo that much, so I think that I'm just going for a bit of a colder. This is also because then I like it more, the contrast of the yellow with a colder background. So this is us for the, the mask with the background and I'm now going to do even more selective adjustments. So I'm now going to create another mask with a brushing tool. So I'm going to just go around the eye. It doesn't have to be exact. Of course, the more exact you are, the longer it takes. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm increasing slightly the exposure 
I'm also increasing the highlights and, and I'm also decreasing the contrast. What this does is makes the eye clearer, meaning that it will be much more visible. I'm also increasing the saturation in the eye because if you remember, we lost some colors there when we were bringing down the saturation of, on the blue part of the cormorant. And I'm also going to add some texture on the eye. Now you see that our photo has changed quite a bit. I think that actually the background is too different from the starting point. I think it's definitely too cold. So I'm going to bring this more natural to here. Yeah, much better. We're adding some other masks. These are masks that are very common in wildlife photography. So what we're going to do in this case is create a new mask and I'm using a radial gradient. I'm just creating a radial gradient. I'll position it here and then I'm doing as I've done it before, immediately the duplicate and invert mask. Here I will act more on the inverted and I'll decrease slightly the exposure, but really slightly. This will create kind of an effect of vignetting, but it's not the classical vignetting around the whole four corners. So it just comes from this direction. Here we are, we edited our photo. We went from a pretty good starting point, but where there was that very bright area that was really attracting the viewer's attention to a more balanced photo where we have the blue of the eye over the cormoran and the yellow that attracts the attention much more thanks to the editing. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this editing video. It was the first time that I did, so I always welcome feedback. And also let me know if you have any questions or other suggestions for future editing videos. So I'll see you next time. And remember to subscribe to the channel not to miss the next videos about editing and much more about wildlife and bird photography. See you next time.